Bristol in uh, the UK and uh, I do music and I write music for theatre and uh, and I have this project called Catapulto. I started doing music when I was about 12 or 13 uh, with an old Russian guitar and a, and a, and a radio. Uh, I didn't have an amp and then some software uh, on the computer and some cheap synthesizers like keyboards and stuff. Just the, the usual, usual, you know, weapons. I, when I was when I was living in Poland, I maybe played two gigs or three gigs with a big computer and with Super 8 projections that my friend was doing because he was a sort of a film enthusiast. So he was buying, you know, tapes from not tapes but spools like Super 8 spools from Germany and with projectors. So we were uh, doing this nights where I was playing some stuff purely electronic without vocals, you know, on this big computer, stationary stuff with big, big monitor and, and things were quite ridiculous when I think about it now. This is what we were doing, but then I kind of decided that I want to be uh, maybe in a place where there's more music going on or where, you know, I, I was really into warp music and uh, and uh, ninja tune at that time and, you know, and industrial music a little bit as well and uh, I knew that it all kind of was in the UK, so it was a good move to, to, to go there and sort of explore this stuff. I moved in to Bristol in 2004 because of some friends came to Bristol to stay. Yeah, and then Bristol kind of is also interesting for music. You, can, you, you, know, you could get away with quite um, original stuff there. I think MySpace was very important at some point. Because I met all this guy. I think I met Selva Electrica through MySpace, perhaps. It was, yeah, so the internet kind of helped getting people together with the same interest in sort of alternative uh, channels of, of doing stuff. Uh, yeah, there was a. I played this record quite a lot uh, in, in Bristol mainly, and, and, and a few times in London, I think. And uh, it was this kind of non-genre spastic, uh, you know, electronics with, uh, I had like a whistle and I had the visuals, I think, as well, synchronized maybe to the backing tracks and I had like a keyboard and it was very hysterical and I kind of liked the record, it was very, you know, crazy, but it was, it was a re research project, what what could you do with vocals and what could you do with, with, uh, with music, you know. So, it was very exciting to put it out in France and in Italy at the same time. And I didn't know anybody, you know, from the countries, like, personally, who make music. So it was purely an internet kind of uh, con consciousness, you know, that you connect with those people and uh, just, yeah, let's do this. And, you know, it came with some sort of line of their releases as well, with Selva releases and then the Proof Records releases. That somehow it, it, you know, sat together with everything. That they, they love you know, somebody told me that you shouldn't really release music for free because then it makes people think that the, the music is not worth it, what, what it's worth. And so there are different theories, of course, and there are marketing theories that let's say different things. I don't really interested in this, but you know, I mean, some people, I guess. I don't know, with Radiohead it was the thing, they kind of released a free album and then, you know... Well, I think it's also down to the economics that you make more money on, on uh, licensing music for specific projects or uh, playing live or, or this sort of thing, rather than actually selling a record through iTunes or selling a record, even a physical record, because then you have to invest money and then, you know... I mean, the, the object is interesting in terms of, like, playing a gig and having some merchandise, maybe. It's, it's nice to have something on vinyl, but I don't use it. I mean, it's like, you know, it's like, it's like a bit like what kind of clothes you wear, you know, do I have to judge you by it? <laughs> you know, this kind of stuff.